Every decision I made, every step I took, has led me to the gate to the unknown. I must enter a place where the void of the beyond is wearing away this realm. This is where the final battle with Arthur awaits me. This is where I will save Avalon. Oh, this is exciting! If this is in fact the last mission, uh, we've been building to this for quite a while. And uh, we've got a pretty solid squad here. Uh, Mordred, obviously, the Red Knight, Sir Balin, and Merlin. And uh, what I particularly like about this, our, for whatever reason, uh, Mordred's morality doesn't mirror the morality chart, but it should. Anyways, uh, we've got a Tyrant here, Old Faith here, and Tyrant here. So I feel like it's, it's, it's a thing of beauty. Uh, quick review. So this is a new heavy armor that we bought. Can't be backstabbed. 18 armor, 75 health. Ignores 25% of the armor breaking value incoming. And 5% extra damage until the end of the encounter for each hit received. Has a new weapon as well. The Spellblade Hexmark. So it's going to add 15% damage for the next melee attack. For each spell cast since the last melee attack. And he's almost always casting... Uh, Stigma and Thunderbolt consistently before he's ever doing attack. So I feel like that's going to make him hit real hard. The Brimstone Ring uh, for some reflection damage also grants the Geyser skill after he's killed five units. A little bit of uh, HP there. And then melee attacks against him cost more. There's a decrease in AP for Taunt, which he doesn't have, but that's okay. And then the last six armor is unbreakable. Um... Now, we don't have a taunt on this guy either. I was just considering maybe swapping that. This is... It's called Mock. So I don't know if that would work the same or not. But regardless. The Red Knight's going to wear the Indestructibility Armor. So the last six is unbreakable. He gets uh, some Reflection Damage in the Oath Stone. Some extra block. Uh, temporary HP for Recuperate. And then he's going to wear the Dueler's Ring. So 12 damage in a duel. Gains 2 HP for each hit in a duel, and 5 damage for backstabs. His his um, sword is the chance to deal double damage. Over here, we also have a Dueler's Ring, so that's going to operate the same. Uh, Ghost Armor Sigil, so uh, last 4 is unbreakable. Sign of the Prowler, this is the Vanguard weapon we've been using for a while now. Extra damage for backstabs, uh, 6 damage for a turn after using a movement skill, and backstabs ignore some armor. And then uh, we have the Vanguard Spyglass here. Merlin is wearing the Sign of Lear, so movement skills can be used for movement AP. Gets a little bit of armor there. He's got the Firebrand Rune, the Culling and Summoning of the Lost, and the Infernal Artifact of Torment. It's been tough to not switch some of these things. I think I could make an okay argument for this one. Um, but ultimately... That burning damage has just been carrying us for so long. Up until the last mission, actually, when we saw somebody that was immune to burning. So, Every decision I let's see. It all comes down to this. Unless it doesn't. What if this is just heading into the next act? It's possible, I guess. When I woke up in Avalon, I never thought no, this seems pretty this. final. It's not desire to save Avalon by ruling it, and yet I'm craving for this fight. I want to settle this once and for Look at these badasses. Woohoo! Even got like the black and red theme going on for the most part. Merlin can wear whatever he wants. Tell me it's a 4v1. He looks intimidating. Mordred, my friend, how desperate and reckless you must be to follow me here. I had my doubts, but it really is you then, Arthur. Are you certain about that? Do you seek the Arthur you used to know, or the once and future king you've been chasing <laughs> all this time? Is there any difference? Mordred, there's a huge difference. We all change, and still the past is a thorn embedded in swollen flesh. It hurts us. It's always there. Do you want to tell me that there's an Arthur buried in the one who's talking to me? The lady shattered my soul into pieces. Yes, I am one of them. But hmm. you must have realized that by now. Any chance I can talk to the Arthur I knew? Oh, 
was a smart idea, Sir Mordred. Uh, thank you. <coughs> if you call for me, he can stop me talking to you. Fortunately, you understood my cues. Is he, he's BSing me, right? Are you really the Arthur I knew? I'm your former companion and long lost enemy, Sir Mordred. Huh. But we can't talk for long. I'm weak and very tired. How could you be weak? You look stronger than ever. It is not me you see here. It's what I have become. An incarnation of the once and future king. In a present, I try to avoid and fail. So will you. What are you doing? You're destroying Avalon. I'm saving it, son. Oh, and that takes a huge effort. I might... Leave a scorched land behind, but the world is still here. What you see here, it's not a failure. It's a success. What are you talking about? Don't you understand? I'm still fighting. I'm trying to rebel an endless army. I must defeat any mortal enemy. Okay. Well, the ladies brought me here to destroy you. She tried to stop me, and it was a mistake. I can still win this battle. What's your plan? Are you trying to make me talk, son? Oh, we lost him. Enough of this chatter. The demonic self is back, I see. I'm not a demon, Mordred. I am King Arthur. What makes a man if not the purpose he chose to fight for? I'm not fighting for the lady anymore. I have a new purpose. And who gave you a new purpose in your afterlife? It was you, Mordred. Great. When you made a deal with Baylor back in Britannia. When you stabbed me in the Battle of Camlan, you made me immortal. You gave me the gift of eternal life and an absolute purpose. The poison I put on my lance. Indeed. It was a poison for some. A blessing for others. Yes, it was Baylor's blessing that made this Arthur a messenger of the Dark God. And what would the message be? It is a very simple message. It says, I am coming. Oh, damn. Okay, King Arthur. He's not fire immune, <laughs> so that's good. He doesn't look too bad. He's gonna hit really hard. He's got a good cleave. He can summon reinforcements. That'll probably be the first thing that he does. He's got bone cage. Catch the target in a cage of bones for three turns. What? Uh, the target is stunned and immune to any other effect for the duration. This keeps fading. Prisoner can be freed by destroying the vitality of the cage. Deals increased damage for two turns. What is going on? How come that's not sticking? Pulls the target to a close adjacent tile. Death Bolt. Weakness and Poison. And then Stone Shell. Okay, interesting. Interesting. It's got 100% physical and mental debuff resist. I think we know what we need to do. We need to at least strip armor. And I'll be happy with that. That's all I got. What do you want from me? We're gonna throw this down. We're gonna chill. So he's losing some AP from the chill. I'll give him another target here. And then I'm just gonna like teleport out for a second. Let's uh, throw the ax. And... I think, well, actually, I, I don't, I don't think this will matter. It's gonna go one way or the other, I guess. Let's encourage him to go this way. I don't think the mock's gonna do anything. Let's recuperate. And let's see what he does. I have to imagine he's going to summon. Me, Mordred, if you 
truly wanted to save Avalon, you let me kill you now. Oh, look at this. Calling in Fomorians. I knew there had to be something more going on. Okay. So was that his summon then? Look how many things he's casting. Simmer the frick down here. So he sharpened weapon. His summon is gone now. Weird. Okay, so that must have been just him doing that. What are we waiting for? So this is th three hits. Okay. What's it gonna be? I am gonna do this. We're gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna chill. Uh, we'll maybe wait to set that up. No mercy for the wicked. Full backstab here. And then I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna try and draw him through here. Throw on our recuperate. What are we waiting for? I don't think this is gonna accomplish a thing. Nope. You must be really desperate. Okay, so let's throw up another enemy back here. And then I will teleport and hide. Let's go here just to avoid a potential cleave. I feel like he probably can't reach us with the chill and all that, but let's see. Uh, Hylor was stupid to choose you as his puppet. No one simply can't trust Sir Mordred, a treacherous bastard. Okay, Balin. Time for slamming. Look at this. <laughs> Trivial. Oh, damn. He just turned into a dragon? Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Okay, hold up. It's not fire immune, so deals damage in six by four. Tons of damage. Deals damage in a huge cone-shaped area. Spit for three by three. Summons reinforcements. And deals damage in a cone-shaped area, causing knockback. So does he, is he also going to move? I'm going to throw some new traps here. It'll get rid of these ones. We can only have three. Let's see if I could help. Um. Let's just make sure he gets hit. Starts burning. Okay. So that's something. Try and give him some decoys over on on this side. He's got 200% debuff resist. Um, let's just hold Merlin's here. I really would like to strip some of this armor if I can. Okay, that's all I care about. Make up your mind. And then we'll just keep these guys kind of spread and see what he does. There's the summon. Now, when we killed his first form, the summons disappeared. So, I, I the problem is I don't know if I'm going to be able to get behind him for backstabs. Yeah, neat. Okay. So that's going to change things. 
Let's go here. Little summon. Little this. I'm gonna continue to hit him. Well, hold on. Maybe what I'll do... Because he's already got that burning, which is good. Maybe I'll try and burn, like, each of these guys. Put a little... Oh, yeah, that's almost useless, say. Not almost. It, it is. But that's fine. I'm going to back up here. I'm going to shuffle Balin just way over here. And Mordred... Get rid of some of that, and hold. Just get rid of whatever armor we can. Let's uh, taunt this guy. He's gonna lose AP. Okay. So he's stationary. He's not coming to fight at all. Okay, Mordred, not on fire. That's nice. Can I, uh... Targeting him is weird. Okay, strip more armor. What's it gonna be? I do wonder if I should hit these guys, because he's already burning. Yeah, I probably should. This one's dead, but this guy's big enough. Does he have any more summons? Oh, he does, so that didn't go away like last time. Actually, I should, I should do this first. I think I'm gonna do this to get the surprise damage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And what's his detection range? It's pretty close. Doesn't seem to move, so I think I'm okay with this. Do you need any wise words? Ready. And then the Red Knight. I don't see any reason why I should engage here. Can I get a cross? No. Okay, so you're holding your... Does this guy have, like, a leap? Yeah, but not yet. Hold. Okay. I'd like to see him all of a sudden just walk out. Now, this is not a backstab, but that doesn't matter. I'm going to continue moving just in case. Now we can burn these two.
I'm mostly curious to see if he can still be chilled. He can. Nice. Even at 200%. So that skill is like insanely strong. Actually could have summoned up my loss before I did that, but... It's fine. Let's uh, recuperate here. Taunt, and we'll just kind of keep kiting this guy, I think. Burn, baby. Oh, he's moving. Whoa. Oh, cool. Okay. That's neat. Oh, he healed. Very nice. Yeah, he might get revealed here. He you didn't. I can't fight. I'm gonna summon my lost over there. I just want to be far enough away where, like, nothing can hit me, but I don't know if I'm going to have that. Let's do this. So, he's dead in, like, a couple of turns. Stand in my way. What? gonna throw everything we got. Okay. I should get in here. I don't know what his thresholds are. Okay, he's gone back to that one. Is it only at 84? God, are we close. Is that gonna be his last, though? Time That's the question. The okay, so you gotta hold, you gotta hold. I'll throw this up here. Unless he's got some crazy heal, he's dead on this next turn anyway. Oh boy. Right underneath him. Ooh, what did he just do? I'm not sure what he just did. Make up your mind. He is dead, I think. Oh. He dead, it dead? is my destiny to rule this land with magic and steel. Let this be a lesson to all, to whoever or whatever crawls out of the darkness to conquer Avalon. This is my realm, and it will stay that way as long as I'm here. By the powers vested upon me by the Lady of the Lake and the gods of the Old Faith, I swear that I will protect Avalon, just like our ancestors did. Whoa. Okay, it is dropping us gear. I know there's some potential, like, end game type stuff, but. Oh, what was hitting Merlin? I didn't even notice what was hitting him. Didn't take any vitality damage, but. Okay. Okay, guys. Well, let's see. Frugal Knights. Sir Mordred kept his promise. 
The once and future king is gone. Though Avalon has been ravaged by Arthur's nightmares, it prevails, for now. And for the first time in my long existence, I'm experiencing doubt and fear. I was so blind. Arthur brought Valor's poison to Avalon. He was the rot that withered my world. His soul was the sick light that guided Balor back. I fought the Fomorians once and banished them from my land. But instead of sheer force, Valor used deception. The demonic god is coming back from his otherworldly prison. Should I have trusted Arthur, regardless of what he had Shut become? Up. Does it matter now? I chose Mordred, and I will stand by my decision. The fight for Avalon is over. But the battle has just begun. Sick! Guys, we did it. Crypt, what crypt? The Dark Lord of Camelot, see the consequences. Neocore Games. Not a developer I was familiar with before this game, but thoroughly enjoyed it, man. We, uh, we kind of found, like, a, a team comp that seemed super dominant. You probably could have even done more with, um, you know, maybe having two vanguards in every battle is possible. But once Merlin came online, oh my god. Like, <laughs> he just absolutely crushed. Like, he's, he's basically... The entire battle, right, is is him. And everyone else is just there to kind of, you know, <laughs> be existent. I, I shouldn't say, I shouldn't take that away from Tristan or, or Balin. Because they, they all put a lot of damage and got us to Merlin. Um, but certainly feels like if you're, not, if you're not playing with a vanguard in every party or... And I should give comp compliments to Sir Ector and maybe even Lady Dindrain for the early game contributions, right? Because they did carry us quite a bit too, but um, yeah, it's just some of their damage output is so huge. And I, even our vanguards were nerfed quite a bit and still were super strong. But yeah, I really enjoyed this. I think the thing that I would give it my biggest props to were how they continuously had small variations in their mission design. Uh, it was subtle and it wasn't huge changes, but it just made every mission feel pretty unique. There was, you know, sometimes you'd get flanked, you'd have to help people, you'd have to rescue people. Oh, here we go. Welcome to the end game of the Chain God season. We'll go through this in a sec. Um, but I, I appreciated that it felt as if every mission was slightly different. And that kind of kept my engagement throughout the course of the campaign. There's a couple of things that were a bit unclear in terms of the way that certain mechanics worked. Um, and that could probably use a little bit of, of polishing. I enjoyed, I enjoyed the, uh, some of the roster management. That was, that was kind of cool. Uh, there is this pressure to kind of get your guys leveled up as high as you can. And look, I mean, we got four or five, six people there that are uh, level 21. So we managed to keep up and there was a time where I was thinking we're gonna be behind. But I did have to, you know, pick and choose who was coming out to these missions with us uh, and have a sort of core group that I was investing in. I really liked the, um, the uh, training system that they had in place where you could put people in to develop them, but you could also remove them. And they made it so that you didn't just auto level your bottom guys, you still had a, a certain number of slots that you had to um, take into account when you're managing your roster. So that was kind of cool. What is this now? So, collect soul fragments. Slain from Orions drop a fragment of their souls that can be collected by stepping on their tile. Soul fragments still hold part of the malicious from Orion essence. Picking up one bestows various debuffs on your hero based on the type of soul. They expire after two turns. Soul fragments not picked up before expiry or end of the encounter are lost, except for the ones dropped at the very end of the encounter. Then you buy relics. 
Collected soul fragments can be spent on powerful relics. Some of the relics have unique enchants that get stronger as you acquire more spire shards. The soul merchant's stock does not refresh. All his goods are visible from the start, so you can plan ahead. And then destroying spires. You may encounter Fomorian spires on missions. These spires empower Fomorians and conjure powerful hurricanes each turn. Uh, destroying them not only eliminates these effects, but also grants a spire shard. Collect spire shards to empower your relics with unique enchants. My nightly quest is over. I defeated King Arthur, the beast of my former nemesis, or the beast my former nemesis had become. The torn fragments of the once and future king were all destroyed, and the task the Lady of the Lake gave me is over. However, I can hardly find peace. Arthur's final death was only the beginning of a tumultuous era, the rise of darkness. I must stand ready. Camelot must prevail. 22 on Merlin. Bastion Sigil. Taking vitality damage from a hit restores 14 HP. Interesting. That's neat. Five Unbreakable and Duel. 10% damage for one turn for each hit received. Minus eight damage from range. That's actually pretty good. Vanguard. Start every encounter with 11 temporary HP. Heroes gain AP during the first encounter after arrest. Five Unbreakable while outnumbered. Minus five received from range. See, these both put conditions on the Unbreakable armor. The ones that we have currently are just straight up unbreakable, which is super, super strong, I think. Level 20 gear. That's nice. Don't see that a lot. This thing here, damage against chilled units, very specific. I don't know. Marksman stuff, some armor pierce, half level worth of XP there. Victory is victory, even if it opens up an entire world of new troubles. King Arthur's last fragment is no more, but the true battle for Avalon has just begun, as Baelor, the ancient Fomorian god, is returning from the void. As the king and defender of Avalon I alone stand between him and victory. The story of Sir Mordred and King Arthur is over for now, but new missions are awaiting you in the endgame. Defeating Baelor will be your final challenge of the game, but beware, you need your strongest knights and equipment to succeed. Interesting. Uh, yeah. So I think, let's look at some of these. Find and kill the tamer. There's no voice acting. Disrupt the great summoning. And bale fire. Interesting. I'm I'm pro I'm ending the series here as uh, completed the campaign. This is all extra end game content. But it might be fun to do some streams uh, for some of this endgame stuff. I think that could be pretty enjoyable. Tristan's injuries are healed up. That's nice. So this just all kind of continues. Let's throw him in for a mission there. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed this morality system. I do feel like some of their decisions were a bit awkward because, look... You could, you could do something like go all the way to seven, unlock the guy, and then go all the way back here to get this guy. But you're not getting any further than that. And then vice versa on this axis, right? So once you start making these decisions to become a tyrant or an old faith guy like we did, you have to continue making those decisions. Otherwise, it's wasted. Like my first, I think I, I ended up putting maybe three points into Christianity at the start. And that is the difference maker here to get to elite training. But then again, like, <laughs> uh, this, this, this elite training is, the value of it is very low now because you're at end game. So maybe instead of taking three missions to, or yeah, three missions to level, you're taking two. Um, unless you're taking one, I doubt it, but I guess it just helps this end game process of keeping people relatively leveled up. Um, but there's no incentive to, to, to make a choice that didn't align with your desired um, morality, right? So I kind of wish that there was a different way of managing that. One of the ideas that I had was, you know, instead of uh, presenting a choice that's a tyrant or rightful choice, you know, you're presenting a choice that's, let's say, tyrant or old faith or tyrant or christian sometimes more from like the the nearby um other option instead of across the board 
Because then you have some decisions to make and it forces you to actually have to think on it instead of just picking Tyrant or just picking Old Fate. Um, I guess the same argument can be made if you position something as Tyrant and Christian, you would just always pick Tyrant. But the idea is, is that you're picking kind of a, uh, a north-south option matched with an east-west option instead of being paired against their opposites because in more situations you'd have to make a call and some of them are going to be obvious I guess if you're in old faith you're just going to pick old faith but if you have an old faith and a tyrant option then it becomes okay what do I really want I was happy to be able to unlock all of these guys um, the black knight and the red knight I loved both of them they were fantastic. Dagene, meh. Bedivere, mm, not bad. And Morgana, just, I, I, she didn't really hit home for me. I don't know. I just felt like by the time I got here, I had so many other much powerful, much more powerful options. I'm sure people can make a case for any of the, um, any of the like characters that we didn't meet and how awesome they are. I imagine Lancelot is probably pretty cool. Um. I don't know of any of the others. We fought against, like, Galahad and the White Knight. I imagine if we're on this side, we probably fight against Bedivere and Lady Morgana, right? And vice versa here, fighting Lancelot, we probably fight these red and black knights kind of thing. Which is cool. I think there's so much so much neat opportunity there. Um, but just the choices were kind of watered down because of how they were presented. I'm interested to see what some of this late game stuff is, but as I say, um, maybe we'll do that on a stream or something. So thank you guys so much for watching. I, I hope you had a good time. It may have become a little repetitive in the middle there, but I do feel the story pushed us along relatively nicely. And I was really curious to see how things would go. And I'm happy with the outcome. Oh, what's the soul merchant? This is this guy. Okay, interesting. So he doesn't have like rarity on items it looks like. He buys things for soul fragments. Can I sell things? No. Neat. Okay. Yeah, I guess this was something that was added, like, middle of my campaign, I think. So I don't know too much about it other than the screen that popped up there. But, um, yeah, it might be fun to try. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed my, my time here. If it, if it wasn't a little bit repetitive, um, I could kind of give it a, a more gleaming or a more uh, enthusiastic recommendation. And I still would recommend the game, but I know it's not going to be for everybody. Um, but it hit me at the right time. I started playing this along with uh, Warhammer, and there were certain aspects of Warhammer I liked more, specifically outside of combat. I think that was done really, really well, very similar to XCOM. But I actually found this combat to be more enjoyable. Um... There's a lot more variety of, of soldiers here. One thing I did like is um, they had similar classes, right? Like Arcanist and Arcanist, but they couldn't be more different. You know, like this Fire Drake spell was insane. Speaking of that, the dragon at the end should have had Fire Drake. He should be, he should, if he's bouncing between these presumably maybe four perches on every side, or maybe there's only three, I don't know. He only went to two. Um, but he should be able to like Fire Drake your squad if they're in the middle. And do a bunch of damage or something. He was... We crushed him. I don't know if we're just... Like, I can't say we're over-leveled because we're the level of the mission. So I'm not sure how they're justifying, like, those um, health values and stuff. Because I feel like he just should have been way tougher. Uh, that's another thing, too. Like, we played on uh, the roguelike mode. Didn't know anything about the game when we started, right? And it was locked into hard, I think. There was a, a very hard option if you didn't pick the roguelike mode. But... I kind of liked the idea that the decisions we made were, like, final, and uh, I figured it would still be a relative, uh, relatively good challenge. And it was. At certain points, we definitely ran into some problems. But um, I feel like if I'd played this again, playing on a, uh, like, one-up difficulty from here would probably be the sweet spot. Uh, I had another streamer buddy reach out and ask me about the game and make any recommendations on difficulty, and I said... He, he's he's a good strategy gamer too and I explained like definitely play this on the hardest I don't think you would struggle too much maybe early game right which is pretty normal for most games but uh, by the end like we're stomping and that's probably the case on the hardest difficulty too I don't know 
But uh, yeah, still thoroughly had a good time here and played this for like, what, two months? <laughs> So, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Next game, uh, well, it'll probably be out on the channel by now, by the time you see this. I'm a cat, and it's not like this at all. So, enjoy that. Bye for now, guys. Take care.